Welcome to the ICMR Online Prescribing Skills Course 2020 for the Indian Medical Graduate. My name is Dr. Dennis Xavier from St. John's Medical College, Bangalore. After viewing this video, please do look at the five multiple choice questions given and upload its answers. In this module, we're going to be covering the management of stable coronary artery disease and its secondary prevention. These are our two module reviewers. At the end of this module, the Indian medical graduate at the primary care center should be able to, one, identify patients with coronary artery disease and its risk factors, start treatments and initiate measures for risk factor modification, and counsel patients and their caregivers on the adherence to secondary prevention medications. What are we going to cover today? First, let's look at why this topic is important. Look at a few case studies, what to do, what not to do, and we'll conclude with a few important take-home messages. At the outset, I'd like to refer you to the module on managing emergencies to learn about the management of acute coronary syndrome, which is a dramatic and important manifestation of coronary artery disease. Why is this topic important? The Global Burden of Disease, published in The Lancet in 2017, indicated that ischemic heart disease is the number one cause for death and disability in the world as well as in India. And it has been so in the past decade. Let's look at this figure. You will see here in 2007, the ranking for ischemic heart disease was number one. 10 years later, it continues to be number one. And if you continue on horizontally, you will see that the percentage change over 10 years is 50%. There's been a 50% increase in the burden of ischemic heart disease globally. Let's look at case one. You are in a primary care setup. A 55-year-old man comes with pain in the chest on climbing stairs. Earlier, he could climb up to two stories. Since one month now, he has pain on climbing just one flight of stairs. He is a smoker and a hypertensive. What should you do? First, make sure you take a complete history of symptoms and the history of hypertension. Ask the details of tobacco smoking. Document other risk factors such as weight, diet, dyslipidemia, stress, physical activity, and alcohol intake. Send some simple investigations and start treatments immediately. Thereafter, refer to a specialist for further investigation and management. What you should not do, do not take the symptoms lightly, thinking it is gastritis or something else. This is a typical presentation of exertional angina. Don't miss out on asking history of recent or sustained stress. Don't underestimate the importance of lifestyle modifications. Here are the test reports that came. Cholesterol is elevated, so is LDL, HDL is lower than desirable, triglycerides are elevated. Fortunately, the plasma glucose is within normal limits, blood pressure is on the higher side, ECG is normal. ECG would be normal in a case like this. We refer you to the reference material for details on ECG changes in myocardial infarction. What are the diagnoses for this patient? This is a straightforward stable coronary artery disease. It's characterized by transient myocardial ischemia, also called exertional angina. It's caused by narrowing of the coronary arteries. This is due to atheromatous plaque, which is usually progressive. ECG is usually normal. And changes, if any, are usually elicited in a stress test. This patient's problems summarized here are exertional angina, presence of the following important risk factors. He's got hypertension, he is over the age of 50, he's a smoker, he's a male who has additional risk, and he's got dyslipidemia. How will we manage this patient? As per guidelines, these are the options to manage. Optimal medical therapy for the treatment of symptoms and risk factors, this must be started at the primary care level itself. At the place where you're working, you can start treatments. Then, refer to a higher center or a specialist where the following would be done. An echo test, stress testing, and coronary angiography. The specialist will thereafter take a decision for the need of revascularization, such as coronary artery bypass graft or stenting. What is optimal medical therapy for this patient? Start the following drugs at the primary center itself and explain the importance of each. We have symptom relieving drugs such as anti-ischemic drugs which are nitrates, 
which cause epicardial artery vasodilatation, systemic venodilatation and relieves ischemia. Short acting nitrates for acute effort angina such as sublingual nitroglycerin, long acting nitrates for angina prophylaxis such as isosorbide dinitrate or mononitrates, beta blockers such as metoprolol, bisoprolol, etinolol. These reduce heart rate, contractility and AV conduction. They also increase reperfusion of ischemic areas by prolonging the diastole. Continuing on, drugs for the prevention of acute coronary syndromes, antiplatelet agents such as low-dose aspirin and clopidogrel. These decrease platelet aggregation and addition and prevent coronary thrombus. Lipid lowering agents and guidelines recommend the use of high intensity statins such as 40 and up to 80 milligrams of atorvastatin or 20 and up to 40 milligrams of rosuvastatin. These are used for their LDL lowering action primarily. They also help in the regression of atherosclerosis in this patient. Other beneficial effects of statins include plaque stabilization, reduced inflammation, reversal of endothelial dysfunction and decreased thrombogenicity. The RAS blockers or the renin angiotensin aldosterone system blockers have good evidence for reducing total mortality particularly when there are comorbidities such as hypertension, diabetes and chronic kidney disease. Education and counseling is important. We need to educate the patient on medication compliance emphasizing the requirement for lifelong treatment. To control risk factors such as hypertension and diabetes, they need to have regular blood pressure and blood sugar tests, reduce weight and make appropriate changes in the diet. Smoking cessation is very important and at the primary care level itself we can offer support in smoking cessation and we also have to advise them on the avoidance or limited alcohol intake. Regular exercise is important and these impact risk factors. Stress reduction and we can offer them non-medical support such as yoga or meditation. More details are available in the reference material that we have provided along with this video. What's the prescription for this patient? Isosorbide dinitrate 5 mg given 3 times a day. Beta blocker metoprolol succinate 50 mg once in the morning. Entry coated aspirin 75 mg once in the morning after breakfast. These have to be given regularly. Tablet glycerol trinitrate 0.3 mg given sublingually as and when required. Continuing on with the regular medication, ramipril 5 mg once a day and tablet atorvastatin 40 mg given at night. Note that this patient must be referred to a specialist, a cardiologist or an internist at a secondary or tertiary care center for further management. Some precautions that they have to take while they are taking these medications. Subluvial nitroglycerin, we need to warn the patient of possible headache or lightheadedness. They may be repeated at 5 minute intervals in case pain doesn't subside, the chest pain doesn't subside. If the chest pain continues for more than 10 minutes despite 2 to 3 doses of nitroglycerin, we need to tell the patient to come to the nearest medical facility. Long acting nitrates, tolerance can develop, so give a drug holiday once in a week or once in 10 days, stop the medication. ACE inhibitors such as ramipril or enalapril can cause dry cough and many patients stop this because of dry cough. The rate of dry cough ranges between 10 to 40 percent. We need to tell them most patients if they continue on the dry cough goes away. However, if it is really bothering them and they are not able to continue normal activities, these drugs can be changed and substituted with angiotensin receptor blockers such as Valsartan, Losartan or Candisartan. Angioedema due to angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors such as ramipril or enalapril is rare but is an important side effect and can be a medical emergency which has to be treated. Beta blockers can cause second or third degree heart block and acute heart failure. We need to watch out for this and it's also advisable not to stop beta blockers suddenly. Let's now move on to secondary prevention of myocardial infarction. At the end of the section, you should be able to identify the importance of strategies for secondary prevention of MI, prescribe drugs for the secondary prevention of MI with an understanding of the rationale. And finally, counsel the patient and caregiver on the importance of medication adherence. Let's learn these things with case number two. You're working in a primary health care center. A 65-year-old male patient returns 
after being discharged with successful percutaneous intervention for ST elevation MI at a nearby tertiary care center. The patient is fine now, but he comes to you and is unsure of this list of medications that has been prescribed, why he has to take it and how long he has to take it. So now, using this case, we are going to learn how to explain this prescription for this particular patient. So here is the prescription that the patient is on. You will be familiar with these drugs by now. Aspirin 75 milligrams, Clopidogrel 75 milligrams, Ramipril 5 milligrams, Metoprolol 50 milligrams and Atorvastatin 40 milligrams. So the first two tablets are antiplatelets and for this patient dual antiplatelet therapy is recommended. We need to emphasize to this patient that all these medications are to be taken lifelong and they are not to stop any of these medications without specific instructions from a doctor. And this patient will have to come back after two weeks. We can also add mineralocorticoid antagonist, particularly if the ejection fraction is less than 35 percent. Proton pump inhibitors are useful to avoid gastritis or peptic ulcer disease. What should you do now? Now we are going to explain the importance of each of these drugs and tell them that these drugs help to either control or relieve symptoms or control the risk factors that have caused the coronary artery disease. We are going to emphasize the importance of medication adherence and tell them that if these are not taken regularly, there is a very high chances of a second myocardial infarction. We need to reiterate that the patient has to take lifelong treatment. Review lifestyle and suggest changes for this patient. Let us now look at case 3. You are again in a primary care setting. A 60 year old male patient comes with complaints of sore throat and fever. Nothing to do with coronary artery disease. Sore throat and fever. You take further history and you find out that 9 months ago this patient had severe chest pain and was treated in a district hospital for a myocardial infarction. He says he took medications for one month after discharge from the hospital. Then he felt fine, there were no symptoms and he stopped all medications. And to make matters worse, he has restarted smoking in the last one week. How are we going to manage this patient? Communication is the key to secondary prevention. In order to prevent a case of non-adherence to medication, we need to explain the following to this patient. We need to tell them about the disease and its risk factors, explain to them what these drugs are and why they are given and the rationale for continuing the medications and possible adverse effects of these drugs. We need to also emphasize the importance of complying with therapeutic lifestyle changes. Here is the prescription for this patient now. Aspirin 150 milligrams. Note that this dose is higher now. Ramipril 5 milligrams. Metoprolol 50 milligrams. Atorvastatin 40 milligrams. Now tell them that these medications should not be stopped without consulting the doctor. They need to maintain healthy diet, exercise regularly and reduce weight and there was review after one month. Secondary prevention and rehabilitation after ST elevation myocardial infarction. What are these drugs and how do they help? First, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor helps in the control of hypertension. It counters ventricular remodeling and prevents heart failure after an MI. Those who cannot tolerate an ACE inhibitor should be given an angiotensin receptor blocker such as Valsartan or Losartan. Aspirin must be given in the dose ranging between 75 milligrams to 150 milligrams after an MI and they should continue this lifelong. Dual antiplatelet treatment that is aspirin and clopidogrel or prasugrel or ticagrelor. So aspirin with one of these other drugs should be continued for at least 6 months after an ST elevation MI. Continuing on, beta blockers such as metoprolol helps in the control of hypertension and helps to reduce the risk of mortality following an MI. They reduce the risk of arrhythmias, heart failure and sudden cardiac death. High intensity statins such as atorvastatin in a dose of 40 or 80 milligrams or rosuvastatin in the dose of 20 going up to even 40 milligrams. These are given to reduce LDL cholesterol to below 70 milligrams or by more than 50 percent from baseline. Lifestyle modifications such as exercise, diet, smoking cessation, avoidance of or limited alcohol intake must be emphasized. Regular blood pressure and sugar tests to be done every six months at least. Let's now move on 
to a few common errors that we could possibly make in the management of coronary artery disease. There are six possible errors that we're going to discuss today and please look at them carefully. First, we could make errors in the dosage. We could underdose statins. It's very commonly seen in India. We need to ensure that they're getting high intensity statins in the appropriate dose and we've discussed that in this module. Incomplete prescription. Sometimes we miss out on the frequency of dosing. Missing possible drug interactions, especially in the elderly with comorbidities. Please do look at all possible drug interactions and there are several online tools available for you now to check all possible drug interactions and we'd encourage you to look into that. Failure to communicate to the patient on the follow-up plan and long-term adherence. These medications will have to be taken lifelong to prevent further complications. Failure to prescribe at least four drugs with established efficacy in coronary artery disease. These four drugs we've discussed in detail today, such as aspirin, beta blocker, ACE inhibitors or statins. Failure to emphasize, finally, the requirement for lifelong treatment. Let's now conclude with a few take-home messages. Coronary artery disease, as we saw at the start, is the number one cause of death and disability in the world as well as in India. Medications can relieve symptoms and prevent complications. Physicians at all levels, particularly at the primary care level, must be able to elicit history, particularly past history, and, and figure out what complications they have had, prescribe medications correctly, and counsel for long-term adherence to medications. The Indian medical graduate is an important link to identify coronary artery disease, initiate treatments, and refer to a higher center. And when patient returns to a primary care center after treatment at a higher center, must be able to support long-term primary care. We'd like to acknowledge the three interns who reviewed this video and provided feedback. We'd also like to acknowledge these expert committee members from St. John's Medical College Hospital, Bangalore. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you're now ready to attempt the MCQs at the end of this module. Please now also complete the assignment two given in the tutorial. Thank you and happy learning. Thank you.